Well, great to be with you today for the devotion in God's Word. We're in 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to read verse 17. Let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll jump into this verse. Father, thank you so much. We give you praise and honor, glory, and blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul says this. He says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, beginning in verse 12, Paul gives this autobiographical account to Timothy. I'm not sure if Timothy had heard this before, but you know, when there's someone that you really respect and you honor, maybe you're trying to emulate your life after them and and they just open up and they share something that's really personal. Um, I'm sure that's happened to you. You know, you you you, you kind of eat up every word, you know? It's like it's a meaningful moment to you because you're getting this really authentic piece of this individual that they're they're disclosing. And I think Timothy probably felt this way. You know, Timothy reading this for the first time would have been probably enthralled with, with what Paul was saying and just the humility and the honesty and Paul talking about the faithfulness of God, how thankful Paul was. Like, you know, he, he calls himself a, a blasphemer, an insolent man. He was on the wrong side and he was actually attacking the people of God and Jesus himself. You know, when Paul was on the road to Damascus and he met the resurrected Christ, you remember Jesus said to him, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? You know, these things that you're doing to the people, I'm taking personally, you're, you're doing this to me, the master. And so Paul's just having this moment where he's, um, you know, he is expressing his gratitude. He's remembering where Jesus had pulled him from. No doubt God is using this in the heart of this young disciple, Timothy, as a reminder, like, don't believe your own press, right? Take, take the compliments people give to you and offer them back up to me as an expression of worship. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Don't, don't really misconstrue what's happening here as, as, as I'm using you, Timothy. You're pastoring a, a big church, you know, young guy pastoring a big church, very cosmopolitan city. And I'm not saying that it was easy in that city, but Timothy could have easily become a celebrity pastor and pretty soon, you know, just really focused on his brand. And I'm, I'm sure like these words from the apostle just like rooted him and grounded him in humility and just the reminder that that everything that had happened in his life was because of God's grace, totally undeserved favor. And where does this lead Paul? This leads Paul into a, a moment of praise, right? I mean, when you really do think about everything that he has done in your life, how can you not like just naturally move straight into worship? You know, I don't know what this looked like for Paul when he was writing this epistle, but, but you know, it just feels to me that he was so overwhelmed with the moment, he couldn't help himself but to just worship God in the moment. And he, he does that. Now to the King Eternal, right? Like, like, let's just look at a couple of things here. Paul's just reflecting simply on the pit that he was pulled out of, and he's like, you are the King, right? You are, you are the one who rules and reigns, and I'm privileged to be a, a citizen in your kingdom. And he says to the Lord, he's eternal. You're eternal. You're the one who was and who is and who is to come. You're immortal. You're not some finite being that is limited, um, that has the inability to be self-sufficient. You're this eternal, immortal being, altogether self-sufficient. You're in need of absolutely nothing. You're not confined or bound by the space, time, uh, system that we live in. You're, you transcend it. You're beyond it. You're invisible. You're the invisible God. I can't even behold. The I can't even behold you in its natural state because you are so glorious and holy and otherworldly. He goes on to say that God is the one who alone is wise, right? Paul is reflecting on everything that's happened in his life and and how Christ, the Messiah, the anointed of God, the one to redeem and to rescue humanity, was 
made visible in the flesh, right? The Word, John said, became flesh and dwelt among us. Man, the unsearchable riches of the wisdom of God. Like, who would have ever, who would have ever created a story or whoever could really comprehend that God the Father would send God the Son and God the Son would humble himself and come in the form of a bondservant. God, the one who should be served, is the one who served. And he came in the likeness of man. He, the creator, became part of his creation. It's a mind-blowing thing. And he died. He was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Like all of these steps down to the point where God himself, God the Son, was a substitutionary sacrifice hanging in our place to receive the punishment that we deserve for our sins, the wisdom of God, and then being exalted to the place of power at the right hand of God to the extent that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Man, that is, that's, that's what should compel us to be people of worship. You know, when we really do reflect on all that God has done, and we trace it right to our own lives and how personal He has been with us and how powerfully we've been impacted. Look, if that doesn't bring you to a place of worship and praise, I don't, I just don't know what will. Today, just spend some time reflecting on that. And, uh, and you know, as God moves in your life, maybe you're going to have just a spontaneous spirit-led moment of worship and praise, not because there's a worship team that's leading you and songs that you love, but something that's just generated from a sincere, authentic heart that's been transformed by the Spirit of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray God blesses you with this today and that today is a day of worship for you.